You're listening to Adeshokbe Live. Your manager and how important they seem to be in your career. What is that like? I would simply say a good manager actually makes sure there's nothing like failure. Hmm. Well, it sounds very difficult. Talk to me about consistency. Yeah, it's, it's especially in the current industry where there's so many talented people. I, I can actually say two years down till today, there's been, like, every time there's somebody new. Yes. There's somebody new in the system every time. <laughs> Fufu with Oko. It's mad. And people are surprised. I'm like, bro, this is a different flex. Know. Don't see it anywhere. Is it? People are not going to... I need to keep it on the low. Yeah, yeah. Are you for real? The Afrobeat Podcast. Right. Right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to another edition of Adi Chopin Live, the official Afrobeats podcast here at Rapid Media Studios in London. Um, I've got a special guest in the building. Big shout out to everybody liking, subscribing, sharing. As always, make sure you subscribe and share with friends and family if you're enjoying it, as always. And a big shout out to Afri Media, LM Media, and Shoops.com, where you can get your tickets to the most, to the biggest events and the most entertaining events around. And if you're an event organizer, you can also load your tickets on there for people to find you, buy the tickets, and come party. So. Get shoes in now. Now to my guests, all the way from Ghana, west side of Africa, go coast to be exact. Jackie, uh, uh. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Jackie. Listen, we finally made this happen. You were very busy today. Welcome to the United Kingdom. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, first of all, because I've always wanted to come here. Do you understand? Especially after this, my song was doing really good. Mm. I was really waiting to be here and to also be in this room yes. with you. This and is, finally has happened. So I, super excited. I'm a big fan. You know, I've, I've been a big fan from day one. I think not only your sound, the music, the way the whole thing just caught a mad buzz from Ghana. Yeah. The one thing I want, always wanted to ask you in person is, how does it feel to make music back home and to see the world celebrate and enjoy it the way we've been enjoying it over the last year? How did that feel to you? It's, it's very amazing. It mm. makes me feel very proud of myself because sometimes I sit back and I see the responses from people and I cannot believe that this is actually coming to me. Mm. Like people are actually excited about my sound, about my music, or my music is actually doing a lot in people's lives. So when I sit back and I just look at what my song is doing or what the rest of my songs are about to do, I'm always amazed and I'm very proud of myself. Mm. I know you came into town for the Ghana Music Awards here in the UK. You also performed. What was that like, yeah. first of all? Um, to be a part of such a fantastic event, the celebrating Ghanaian music internationally, not only back home, but, you know, here in the UK and around you know, Europe. What was that feeling like for you? Yeah, so this is an event that this is not the first time they're doing it. They've yes. been doing it years before. Yeah. And for me to be a part of it this year, it means that I'm actually, they've actually spotted me. They've spotted my sound and they appreciate it. The crowd was crazy. Yeah. Probably 10 times what they had the year before. Yeah. And most of them, like you said, the song blew during the pandemic. So yeah. most of them wanted to see the person behind the song, yeah. they were really craving to see me. So when I got on stage, it was just like this bond, this love towards the song and myself. So yeah. it was a fantastic show. I know you've been, you started to touch other parts of Africa because the record charted in countries all over, from yeah. Uganda to Nigeria, Tanzania, Kenya. Kenya. What's that been like? Because you have gone to some of these countries. What are some of the countries that you visited uh, through the success of this work. Yeah, so, so far, I went so I went to Nigeria, yep. and then I went to Tanzania as well. It was in Tanzania that I shot the video for my, my latest release, Oh, the, Need the, Me. The, the, the new video that just came out? Yeah, Need Me. That was wow. when I shot the video, and I also did a song with one of the artists from there. He's called Juke. So, so far, I've just been to Tanzania, and then Nigeria, and then now I'm in the UK. So, hopefully, we'll go to the rest of the countries, and then... And just enjoy that. Listen, Nigeria definitely loves a little bit of Jackie. Um, the record was not only on the charts, it was also on the radio. Yeah. You had the opportunity to speak to everybody. Um, I said to your team, 
at the time when you went to Nigeria that that was one opportunity that a lot of Ghanaian musicians in recent times have failed to take mm. to, to, to just go the extra mile and, and go out there to promote Shara Sasa, Kodia, Becca. You. Yes, these are people that have done that properly yeah. in the past. I know King Promise did that recently, Kitty did that recently. But you, right off the mark, successful song, you guys decided to go to Nigeria to promote. Talk to me about you know, your decision to go out there and second of all, what that experience was like. Yeah, so my manager is very active. Mm. He's one person that if he sets his mind that he wants to do this, he's going to make sure it happens. Mm. So when the song started charting in Nigeria, I mean, the first thing that you obviously have to do is to make sure you are available in that particular market. Facts. Do you get it? So he just made up, made a decision that since the song is actually doing well, we have to go there and promote it to boost the song mm. the more. So we went there, did a lot of radio and TV interviews, did some collaborations, and the song actually started getting bigger yeah. before we got to the place and yeah. after we left the place. Now, talk to me about, I know whenever I hear you speak, you talk about your manager, your management, how important, you know, this team is. Talk to me about the role that a good manager plays in an artist. It, 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 when you relate it to your relationship to your manager and how important they seem to be in your career. What is that like? I would simply say a good manager actually makes sure there's nothing like failure. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's literally it. And that also comes with not giving up with whatever that happens. We're, we're a team where we are always focused on what we've set our minds to. Hmm. Whatever barriers, whatever obstacles that come in the way, we know that we're going to face them. Do you get it? So the only way is up. Failure is never an option. And then we never give up in everything that we do. You also spoke a lot about consistency. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a word that, you know, I use very often as well. And I believe that consistency is actually the most important thing to success than talent and hit records. Most important and very difficult. Talk to me about consistency. Yeah, it's, it's especially in the current industry where there's so many talented people. I, I can actually say two years down till today, there's been, like, every time there's somebody new. Yes. There's somebody new in the system every time. And so if you're not consistent, hmm. Hmm, you're, just going, you're just going to die out. Easy. <laughs> How do you so, stay motivated? I mean, I feel like um, one way that you can actually be consistent, you don't have to, to move away from what you're doing. Hmm. Do you get it? If Jackie is doing A songs, Jackie is going to be doing A songs hmm. to whatever because you also have a fan base. And what the people love is what you're actually bringing out. Immediately you shift from it or you divert, then it's like you're confusing the listeners. Hmm. Yeah. Where did you learn that? that? That coming from a young lady, that's what you would hear from an experienced musician who has tried and failed. Mm. These are the words that experienced people within the music industry share. I, I preach about that a lot. Yeah. How did you get to know that? Um, I think I've been I've been in the industry for just like two to three years. Yeah. Very short time. Yeah. Obviously. But then again, Forever isn't my first song. Mm. I have ten singles yep. before Forever, including Forever. Do you wow. get it? Love is pretty never like this control. All those songs. There are lots of people who don't know those songs. Mm. And there was a time where I perform on stage and people don't know me. They don't know my song. So it's just a few people that respond to it. So there's just, I've had like 20% experience. Mm. I have a little idea about how this industry is and how this industry can actually get you. To. So it's just some small knowledge that I have that wow. I'm pouring it out. No, that's fantastic. Mm. Obviously, you talk about the small knowledge, you know, very humble. Mm. You also have the huge plus of having an icon in your household. Mm. Who is your dad? Have you had conversations about the music bu business with him and what kind of gems, you know, a lot of us will pay so much to be able to sit in front of somebody like that yeah. and just get knowledge from him. What kind of gems has he shared with you and what really has he instilled in you knowing that you're following in his footsteps in the music business? Yeah, um, I think since I started music, um, during 
he he started advising me a lot when my second song never like this blew in Ghana. Mm. Yeah, so he sat me down and just took me through the positives and the negatives, the things I'm going to face, the things I'm not supposed to do. So he actually likes watching my performances. Mm. So that when I come home, then he tells me, next time, don't do this one this way, next time, do it this way. But he's been very supportive and whatever advice, that he, whenever he gets the time to give it to me, he gives it to me. You've also had to to be building a music career a long time alongside education and university. Talk to me about, you know, those two. Well, How did right you do now, that? girl is a graduate. Cut! You know? Talk that! Pop, 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 pop! Talk <laughs> that! Talk! Right now. What, 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 was that especially your final year? When, and this is when Jackie became Jackie. Um. <laughs> 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 Talk to me about how you did, how you managed that. Trust me, my final year was the toughest hmm. because, I mean, especially my group members, those people, they are very stubborn. It's like they're always calling you, Jackie, when are you coming? We need to do this. We need to do that. And then it was also during this period hmm. that I was being called everywhere with the music. And I'm also being called in school, in school. Do you understand? So it was really difficult. It was tough. I had to even, there were so many shows that we had to do that. I had to tell my manager that we had to put it on hold because I had to go back to school. Wow. And he was so pissed. Why? Because you're losing money. Losing he's, a lot. He's like, but I know my African, brother thinking, yo, what's guy? System, if you say you are not going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put that on hold. I had to go to school and then with the exam. A lot of people actually thought that I wouldn't come and write. I'm like, hey. Hmm. Huh. What what did you study at uni? I studied international business. Wow. Yeah, so the official graduation actually is in November, but whatever. But you're done already. You submitted your project. Everything That's done. Done. Did you go to the did you go to the faculty and be like, you know what, you guys can have it now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Now talk to me about, you know, there's there's a renaissance when it comes to a different vibe of African music at the moment. Mm. You know, we're, we're getting different flavors from people like yourself, people like Thames, people like Ira Star. you know, things that artists like Effia have always tried to put the world on, but it felt like it was just Effia that was, you know, that was trying that alternative sound. And But now we're blessed with yeah. so many of you ladies coming out strong. What do you think we, we can attribute to the reason why there's a lot more and, you know, how does it feel to be from an era, a generation where there's a lot of beautiful musicians with incredible voices that are so diverse? Yeah, I think I would give a plus to social media. Mm. Social media is like, <laughs> right now, if, if you're just a good talented person, you just pick up your phone, record something, the next day, you're probably the biggest do you understand? So social media has been a big, good help, especially for the females yep. in the Ghanaian industry, to be mm. precise, because in the Ghanaian industry, is is male-dominated. Like, the girls are a few. Mm. Do you understand? So I feel like with what I've started, it's supposed to motivate any other female that wants to start music that is very possible especially i always talk about social media hmm. that even if you have to go and borrow somebody's phone to show the world what you have you, know, you have to do it because your 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 helper your savior could actually be there hmm. it's not even could actually is there yeah, online yes, they just yeah. need to see they just need to see they see then they find you wherever you are and then that's it they're gone i saw an interview i think it was with you some time ago where you were talking about encouraging more women within the industry that, mm. you know, if you had the opportunity to speak to any woman that wants to come into the business or whatever, you're just going to tell them to keep trying and we need more women within yeah. the industry. Talk to me about that. Yeah, because there's money in the business. Hmm. Yes. Talk that talk, And sis. I'm sure every girl watching this likes money. <laughs> and if you want the money, girl, hmm. Come to the game. Come into the game, trust me. And, hmm. you know, when... The music, when you when you are a lover of music, you enjoy it. You hmm. know, it's like work and happiness. You are doing a particular work that you are in love with Facts. and you are making money. What's what's more than this? Do you understand? So that's why, like, when I get DMs from whether they are young girls or 
like older ones mm. who are talking about Jackie, I want to do music, like can you help me do this, da da da. Even if I don't get to see the text, mm. it doesn't mean that because this artist didn't see my text, then it means I'm not worth it or that. You also have your own way mm. that you can also what come up and then blow yourself up. Absolutely. Mm. What are the challenges that you faced? That your team, what, what were the first kind of challenges that Jackie trying to be a musician, trying to put music out, what were the first difficult things that you had to, the hurdles that you've had to jump over to, to get to where you are, even though you say you're just starting, mm. but at least the success you've had so far, what were the challenges that you had to overcome? Um, I think... Um Somewhere 2019 into 2020, no, yeah, 2019 into 2020, it got to a point I thought maybe I'm not doing the right sound hmm. because it's like you drop a particular song and to you, you feel the song is so good, hmm. but it doesn't get the response that you want. So you sit down and you are thinking, oh, I should switch to this or hmm. I should switch to that. So it plays with your mind. Hmm. You're battling with yourself whether you're supposed to switch from what you're doing or not. But I sit down and then I'm like, no, hmm. even if I should drop a song, and just 50 people are crazy about it that is it you know that you are actually on the good cause you know those 50 people you are actually changing something about them hmm. do you understand people text me to beg me not to change my sound wow. not to change what I'm doing I should keep doing what it is and I mean people have been what, some of our big guys now have been in the game for 10 years 15 years so hmm. I just know that it's a long way and then is always going to get bigger and bigger. Hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. CDP, um, you know, forever, forever remix with Omale. Mm -hmm. It looks like when I'm looking at YouTube now, it looks like you're dropping a music video at least every month or once every <laughs> two months. <laughs> Am I right? And all of them is getting millions. Though. Go over, talk, mm. talk, talk. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like, yeah. you know, the, the progress is there. Yeah. The consistency is there. Then you get a call, Sony says, let's partner. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that telephone call, that conversation with management, yeah. and the decision to go with an international outfit like Sony. Yeah, uh, it's a blessing oh, to be mm. a part of Sony because this is like one of the biggest and greatest family mm. for an artist to be a part of. And so this happened like earlier this year and I'm very proud to be a part of the family. They've accepted me so well and the future is looking extremely bright. Mm. And so this is a big shout to Sony Music from your little songbird. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the, the check must, uh, hopefully that check was fat too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you like money. <laughs> so, talk to me about the the next stage now. You know, um, you've had hit records. You've dropped yeah. a fantastic project. You've had beautiful videos. What is the next step now? I know there's a brand new video out, but I believe that based on the one one two two month dropping of music videos. Mm -hmm. There's another level we're going to. Management is talking in the background, <laughs> trying to pass information. Yeah, what but, is it? but tell him that whatever he's trying to say is already in my head. <laughs> 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 yeah, so Aside Need Me, yeah. which we dropped um, recently, which yeah. is my song. Yeah. Um, Fioki. Yeah. You know Fioki? Oh, right? yeah. Fioki. You got, yo, that record is fire. You, Chik Chike, and yeah. Fioki. He, yeah. he sent me the, the record and the video before it came out. I was blown away. Yeah. So that is Fioki featuring Chike and myself. Yeah. Follow you. The video is also out. Amazing. The song is doing amazing. Yeah. And yeah, what what else is coming up? I'm also working on so many things. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, tell, are you, have you been in studio with? Have you been in the <laughs> studio with some people that we need to be like? Yo. This, we saw videos of you and 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 whiskey, mm -hmm. you know, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. You understand what I, I didn't want to put it on you, but <laughs> I had to put it on you, man. Yeah. What's going on? I mean, yeah, we had some vibrations. Hey, <laughs> come on. In the studio. Yeah. But we should just look forward to good music, mm. whether from me, whether from Wiz. I mean, me, I just went to do. You just went to do God's work. Just went to do God's work. So 
<laughs> fans and listeners should just look forward to surprises. I'm also working on a project as well. Mm. And um, who, who have been, so I've been, I did a song with Mayo Kun. Wow. Yeah, from Nigeria. I have a song too with Jukes from Tanzania. Tanzania. I have a song with D Black from <laughs> Ghana. <laughs> the, the legend. Yeah, but those are their songs. Mm. Yes. So you're just going to wait for them to put them out. Yes, so is, you're not looking at a project Again this year, you're looking at a project in 2022. You want me to give you exclusives? I Come on, <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> okay, I'll give you exclusives. Yes, yeah, so the I'll drop a project next year. Fantastic! Wow, so we can look forward to that. Look forward to that. Whenever I get somebody from Ghana, especially in the studio, because of you know not only my love for the people but for the for the culture, I always want to ask you a question, almost to sell. Ghana to the people. Mm. Um, some of us that experience the people, experience, you know, Ghana, Accra. I know you're from Kumasi, right? Yeah, from Kumasi. Talk to us about Kumasi, man. Tell the um, people about the beauty. Yeah. So I'm from Kumasi, yeah. which is in the Ashanti region. Mm. We speak tree and we eat fufu. Come on. That thing that you like. I'm sure you with like it. A big time with light soup. Like, oh my God. Light soup. But sometimes I go with the okra too. I, you know, I, I, Come again. I go with okra, with okra, man. I'm telling you, Fufu with okra. it's mad. And people are surprised. I'm like, bro, sure. this is a different I flex. Don't see it anywhere. Is it? People are not going to... I need to keep it on the low. Yeah, yeah. Are you for real? So I'm, I'm talking so I'm okra mushroom. and tilapia fish on the, the, on the side. Is it? It was a crime. Hey! <laughs> No, is this it? cannot come out. Hey, this will come for you. You said things can, this one cannot come out. Okay, come so keep you. talking about Kumasi. Yeah, so, first of all, I'm very proud of Kumasi because all the new acts that are doing good in Kumerica. Ghana, thank you, come at the talk moment, that talk. all of them, about 10 of us, the including f- myself, were all from Kumasi. Wow. And that's not amazing. That's amazing. Has Kumasi always felt like they weren't part of the success in the music yeah, industry? Because always, always. We always felt like that. Even before I came into the industry and when I started, it was like, if you are from Kumasi, you are not really heard as much. Mm. Do you understand? But this particular year, no, I think late It started last 2019. Year, yeah, late, no, 2020. Late last year mm. into this year. It's every ridiculous. Every new artist that you know yeah. Yeah, talk of this one. Hey! They are all from Kumasi, and I'm so proud to be a Kumerican. But you being a Kumerican and being a songbird with your vibe, mm. and the, the biggest genre coming out of the Kumerica right now is that drill sound. Yes. Well, how, like, do you try maybe once in a while to say, listen, Kofi, drop me that beat, make her jump on him, or you still kind of, you try to stay away, you don't let them influence oh, you too much? I'm not no, Jackie is versatile. So I, I could actually drop a whole drill album. What if I do that? Ah, we're not gonna we're not gonna be angry <laughs> because that's your side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean for me, I do everything. Hmm. So far as I love the beats, I don't mind what genre it is. I would just hop on it. And finally, before I let you go, mm-hmm. um again, you are now one of the new crop of incredible female talent that's coming out of Africa, from Nigeria to South Africa, from Shoma Josie to all of them. But you're walking in the footsteps of some of the other women that have been amazing before you guys. Who are some of the African female stars that you've looked up to, whether from Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, whatever? Yeah, you I, growing, growing up, up, I listened to Efia from Ghana. <laughs> And I Legend. listened to Asha from Nigeria. Woo! Yeah, a lot. I'll not even go far. The two of them wow. were were like the people that I watched their performances, their lyrics, their melodies, how to go about their sound. Hmm. So if you pay attention to my music, you might have, you might feel the blend of Asha and Efia in it. So those were the two icons hmm. that I listened to when I was growing up and even now I still do. I saw that some time ago, maybe last year, when people were trying to compare you as we usually do in the media and on social media to FIA. You put a bullet to that. Quick! No, don't do that. Quickly. It's disrespectful. Hmm. So... I was I was very mad hmm. when I saw on Twitter that they're actually comparing me to him. No. Too different. Nah, very... Facts. Well, um, I know it took you a lot to get into this studio today. Um, as always, 
I'm a big fan. I, 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 I told the, the, the record label exec, I said, I dare anybody in the UK to hold up their hand to say they're a bigger supporter of, of Jackie than me. That's the ener energy God. Straight away. I, told, I, I was like, I energy said, listen, God. if there's anybody in the UK that's a bigger supporter of Jackie than me, put your hand up. I want to see that. Up. Yeah. So, and nobody could. They couldn't. So, that's why you're here. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it gives me so much pleasure once again to give it up for the incredible Jackie.